Let us now look at another important class of graphs, namely bipartite graphs. So uh, for bipartite graphs, we have a theorem by Koenig from just over 100 years ago that says that a bipartite graph uh, is delta edge colorable, where delta is the highest vertex degree. So remember, 50 years later, Witzing would prove that you need either delta or delta plus one for any graph. That is simple. But for the bipartite graph, delta is enough. And we're going to prove this by induction on the number of edges. In a graph with one edge, this is clear. It's clear that it is uh, one edge colorable. Now, before I move on with the proof, just a word of warning. So with bipartite graphs, we've talked about colors being assigned to the vertices. So a graph is bipartite uh, precisely if you can color the vertices in two colors uh, such that no vertices of the same color are adjacent. But now, please forget about the colors of the vertices. We're going to talk about the colors of the edges because we're discussing edge colorings and the chromatic index. So uh, what we need to show, because we're doing this by induction, is that if in a bipartite graph with m minus 1 edges, you can color it with delta colors, then you can do that with m edges. So take your bipartite graph and remove an edge vw. So you have somehow your bipartite graph. Here you have vertices v and w and an edge e. And if you remove it, the remaining graph uh, will uh, still uh, be bipartite. And since the highest vertex degree in the original graph was delta, when you have removed this edge, the uh, degrees, so, so V and W had degree at most delta. So after removing the edge, they have degree at most delta minus one. So what do we want to show? We want to show that, well, we are assuming that this uh, graph is um, delta edge colorable. So note that because chi prime of g is at most delta, chi prime of g minus e will also be at most delta. And the reason is that, uh, well, we have removed an edge. So maybe the edge doesn't touch a highest degree vertex, then it remains delta or it decreases. So for g minus e, the induction hypothesis tells us that delta colors are enough. So now we need to show that the same delta colors are enough when we put the edge E back. So the good news is that since we have decreased the uh, degrees of V and W, we have one color available at each of V and W, meaning that of the other edges going in to V and W, uh, they will all be uh, colorable in at most delta minus one colors. So there is one color available. If we're lucky, it's the same color that's available at V and W. So say V has no yellow edge coming into it and W has no yellow edge coming into it, then that is what it means for a color to be available then yellow is available at both vertices and we can color this remaining edge yellow. But that's if we're lucky. There is nothing that guarantees that. So uh, that's the uh, nice situation. The bad situation is if different colors are available at V and W. So since we're free to call our colors whatever we want, let's say that blue is available at V and yellow is available at W, meaning that V has no other blue edge coming into it, and W has no other yellow edge coming into it. So now we do something that's a bit complicated, but it's a nice trick. So you look at the following. You look at the subgraph of G that is that consists of all the vertices and edges that are reachable from G using only blue and yellow edges. So uh, we have here V. And we have here W. And you have all sorts of edges with all sorts of colors that uh, attach to V and W. 
And now you start at V and you allow yourself only to walk along yellow and blue edges in whichever way you want, but all other edges are lava, you can't use them, and see how far you get. And the point is that this subgraph cannot contain W. Why is that? Well, so if you have your edge, your vertex V here and your vertex W here, and so blue is available at V, meaning that there is no uh, blue edge at V, but yellow is not available because uh, we're assuming that uh, there is not the same color available at both V and W. So you start with a yellow vertex and then a yellow edge, and then you come to some vertex. And this vertex will not have any other uh, yellow edge coming into it because edges cannot be colored the same color. So you follow a blue edge next. And you come to a vertex and then yellow is available and so on. So every other time you are using yellow, every other time you are using uh, blue. So remember now something about bipartite graphs. V and W are not just some random vertices. We know that we have our mysterious edge E that nonetheless exists between V and W and we still need to color that. The existence of edge between V and W mean that in since our graph is bipartite, V and W cannot belong to the same set. They belong to different sets. One is black, one is white. But this implies that uh, any path from V to W will have to have an odd uh, number of steps. Because if you have a bipartite graph like that, so you have V somewhere here and W somewhere here. And every second time you are down here, every second time you are up here. So it will have to be an odd number of uh, edges. And here's the funny thing. If you go from V, start with yellow, blue, yellow, blue, and so on. At, after an odd number of steps, you will be arriving to W on a yellow edge. But we said that yellow was available at W, so W have, has no yellow edges arriving into it. This gives us a contradiction. So all this to say, so far we're not, we haven't proved the theorem, but all this to say that starting from V, if you just look at the subgraph of everything that is reachable on just blue and yellow edges, you're not going to get to W. So then in this subgraph, you can flip the colors, recolor this subgraph, making the yellow edges blue and the blue edges yellow and leaving all other colors the same. This is possible because this graph in itself, I mean, you can always uh, change, you can always swap colors. In, you can take the entire graph and say, okay, in the whole graph, I'm changing blue to yellow and yellow to blue. This will not change anything. This is just renaming the colors. But the reason I can do it for this subgraph is the subgraph is everything that is reachable with yellow and blue edges. So there is nothing, this subgraph has nothing connecting it to the rest of the graph with yellow or blue edges. So I can, in this minor world, I can change the colors of blue and yellow. Now suddenly yellow rather than blue becomes available at V. So I am again in a situation where V and W have the same color available and I can color my missing edge yellow. This was a bit of a tricky proof, but it shows that a bipartite graph can be colored with the same number of colors as the highest edge, uh, the highest vertex degree. As a consequence of this, uh, we get that the complete bipartite graph on R white and S black vertices 
Well, the degree of the white vertices is S, the degree of the black vertices is R, so the maximum of these two numbers will be the chromatic index of the complete bipartite graph.